Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video, we're going to look at making what I like to call a concept square. And it doesn't have to be a square. It could be anything. But the idea is that it's a simple family that can get you uh, space planning, master planning, doing things real quickly in plan, really quickly, obviously, but giving you some more information uh, that is parametric. It's going to give you that live data, which is really, really helpful. Okay, before we get into it, though, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Okay, getting into it now. What are we going to where, what are we going to do? Well, uh, for this video, we're going to make essentially a graphical square, and this graphical square is going to serve as a room, a building, uh, a section of a building, things like that. Uh, something you might use to space plan an area, and so it's not just that. I could simply <laughs> draw a region and be done with it but we're going to take it a little further than that because we're going to add some labels and these labels are go going to report data that we care about in this case it could be anything that you might care about you could actually calculate costs per square foot you know things like that but we're going to focus on the name and an area just simple like we have an area that we're trying to achieve and we can push and pull and see what we get okay but I'm in a basic project and we don't care about the project yet. Um, so we need to actually make a family. So we're going to go new family and we're going to start with a label. And this label is going to be found in annotation and actually generic annotation. Okay. And with that, we're starting off with a bank blank slate. Uh, this is something that you probably should read once, but then delete, always delete it. We don't want that to show up <laughs> clearly. So then all we're going to do at this point is make a label and I can dump it anywhere because I'm going to have to align it, you know, further myself, uh, center it in, in the family. Uh, but at this point we're prompted to use parameters and parameters that <laughs> don't happen to exist because we don't have any that we have created in this family. It's just a blank. So what do we want? Well, like I said, we want name. Not only that, we want area. So we want two parameters to work with. And uh, because I, this is going to be a little bit advanced, but it's also not. So you can follow along. I'm going to make this a shared parameter, and you'll see why. Uh, in a second video, I'm going to make a basically scheduling this data because you want to have the data, but you want to see it in a schedule and perhaps calculate more values and things like that. Uh, so it's really a, a live version of planning. So I'm going to go to shared parameter, and all of this is going to go away. But I'm going to select, and I don't care about any of these because I'm going to ultimately make a new group. So with this, I don't want either of these two groups. So I'm going to make a new group, perhaps call this concept. That seems to make the most sense. And within this group of parameters, I want to make the two that we're talking about. Uh, the name. So obviously I'll call this name. And we want that to be a text parameter because we want to be able to determine that ourselves just via text. Okay. And then we also want to make another one called area you know again you can call these anything you want because what matters is the type but my guess is we want this also to be area yes so with this we have a parameter group called concept and then within that we have these parameters cool good to go and at this point i'm yep i see everything here that i need to see press ok again and now i, I don't want the area just yet i want the name so i want name and this again we're going to see this grouped under text Grouping doesn't matter so much here and within the parameter properties because it's just where it's falling in the, the all the parameters for the family. Not a huge deal, but I want this to be an instance because I want this to be per little box that I have. Okay, and then well, I'm, I'm not done yet because I need to make my area. So I'll, again, pull a shared parameter. In this case, instead of pulling the name, I'll pull area. Okay, and then that is going to fall into, sure, analysis. And, of course, I want this to be an instance as well. Press OK, and there we go. OK, so we have made the parameters. We need to actually add them to the label. So I'm going to add name, easy, sample text, does not matter. Uh, and honestly, I don't need to do anything else here except add my area. So I've added both of these. What I want to do at this point is make sure to break between name and area. So I have a line break between the name and then the area. So they're on two separate lines. That's easy enough. OK. So I, look at that. That's simple. It's it's simple and it's done. So I'll press OK. And there we go. Now, at this point, it's like, well, what scale are you going to work with or at least ultimately present or show or use when it comes to Revit? That's a great question. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer that for you, obviously. But uh, the thing to be aware of here is that we were not able to physically 
put this in the center exactly. There's no way to align this. So just take your best guess. Get in here and, and guess. I don't know. Something I do like to do is because I'm going to make these pretty little boxes is I don't want this to be opaque. I want this text box or label to be transparent. I want to be able to see through it. So I just have the black text and then whatever color I decide. And so this looks about centered, looks pretty good. The final thing to worry about with labels is the distance we have here. So if this is way in here, obviously my sample text fits in here, but if I have a name longer than four characters, that's not going to work at all. So I want to make sure to drag this out so I can get full name and the full area each on its own line, because that's what I care about. Then before I load this into something else, I do want to save it. So let's save it and let's call this concept label because that's what it is. Save beautifully. All right. And then so now I don't want to load it into just my project because that wouldn't do anything for me. I want to actually make another family. And of course, what we want to do at this point is make a detail, a detail item. That's simple. OK. And I love detail items because they're so versatile and they're 2D. So it's real easy to work with. So we can come over here to my label and I can simply load into project and I'll make sure to load that into my family two instead of project one, please name your projects and families. I haven't gotten around to that yet, but uh, you'll, you'll thank me later when you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump this because I actually do have the ability to align this. It's a label. Yes. But once I have it in another project or whatever, it's going to use the lines that I, you know, the basically center point that I have quote placed it and use the grid lines that came with the family and I can now align them and lock them to it. So now it's centered beautifully. It's always gonna be centered on whatever I make in this family. And so what, what is displayed is just the area. Now, uh, what we wanna do of course is make our pretty box. And I, I like to use reference planes because they are the best way. And so I'm just gonna draw four out here and we'll go from here. And of course we want this to be a box. And by box, I mean, we want this to be not just floating out and we want it basically based on the center, that type of a thing. So what I need to do at this point is start aligning these together so I can equalize those and then do the same thing this way. So with that, I now have basically a rectangle and it doesn't have to be a square. Obviously we want to do a rectangle. So we'd have a length and a width. So with this, we have consistency so I can push and pull this and you, you kind of see what we're doing here. And at this point, we need to actually make our parameters, but I'm going to make them based on these dimensions. So we have that dimension and this one. So this one we'll call length. And so I can come up here at the top and because I have no parameters in this family, I need to make a new one. And this is going, because I made a new one based on a dimension, it's going to show up here as dimension grouped, and then it's going to be a length and everything. So I want this to be an instance because I want to determine it myself per square. And I'm going to call this length. Call it what you want, but it doesn't matter at all. Um, now, <laughs> this is where we get into shared parameters again. We could actually end up making this a shared parameter. And in fact, I'm going to do that. So I want to come into concept, edit, new, and then length. And then, and of course, it's a type parameter of length. Perfect. This is great. Good to go. Make sure to check length. That's it. Everything I want right there. And again, I'm going to do the exact same thing for width. All right. So width. Actually, no, shared parameter, edit new, of course, call this width, spelled correctly. Uh, it's hard, I know. That's going to be a type parameter of length. Good to go. Select that there. Select width. And we can see we want this in instance as well, just like length. So cool. So what we have now is length and width. And I can determine what these are, basically what they start as, just by setting them setting them here. So maybe do 10 by five, something, whatever. This does not matter. And so we have these values that are length times width. Cool. That's great. Now, this is nothing as far as what's actually displayed in my project ultimately, because I have nothing but reference planes. Now they're nice, but I have nothing that is working with them yet. So we need to come up to create, and this is where we're going to work with our filled region. It's, it's just a simple filled region. It's 2D, remember? So, and the cool thing is because I have these reference planes, I can just draw a box, whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, this is where you can get fancy with your, you know, subcategories, types of lines, whatever that you want. I'm not going to, I'm just not, I'm going to, so I can accept this. And we're going to use all of these reference planes to align and then lock each of my four sides 
just like this, align and lock, align and lock, and then finally align and lock that. And so look what happens. Whenever I drag this around, I get my square going with it, my rectangle, whatever it is, which is perfect. That's what I want. Whether this is 10, 2, 10, whatever, that's cool. 10 by 5, that works great. And so with that, I'm pretty happy, except I don't like this color. You know, that's not a big deal. So we can start with anything here, and none of these are really a solid color I want. I, don't, I definitely don't want black, but I can start with black, and we can duplicate this, and maybe I just want a, a nice blue, really subtle blue. So we can come over here, and I'm going to make this a really subtle blue. Cool. <sighs> Works perfectly. Okay, so look at this. This is starting to look like what I want. So I can come down here and preview visibilities off. I can preview visibility on, and this is basically what it's gonna look like in in my family or in my project. And now nothing has changed because I don't have any visibility parameters or whatnot. So just knowing that this is what I get in the project is perfect. Now you might say like, what's happening with this label? Well, we're not quite done because we haven't uh, carried everything over yet. So whenever I click on this, remember we have instance parameters for the area and name, and these are not assigned to parameters within this family yet. Therefore, they would not be transferred or show up in my project. So I'm going to come to my name here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I have to do it for this project. So I'm going to go to new, and remember we already made it as a shared parameter, which is a great reason to maybe use shared parameters. So name is right there, and it's instance it's we're doing the exact same thing we're just basically taking it from one family into the next nested family and then finally it will show up in the project all right name and then area okie dokie area it's again a shared parameter area boom instance as well because we want this to be per square that we determine all right there we go now that's looking good if i come to my parameters here i can see this is everything that I want to show up in my project for this family. That will show up, and this is great. Okay, now, so there's, this is some, there's something that I don't like, but I am going to go ahead and save this and load this into the project and show you that. So with that named concept square, what I can do is load this into my family. So I'm going to just dump this here, and let's see what we get. Well, obviously it's 10 by 5. We have my length here, which is great. Uh, but my area is not reporting. So what's going on here? Well, let's let's deal with uh, one other thing first. So let's go ahead and name this. So let's go ahead and name this, um, you know, bedroom. Maybe this is a bedroom. I don't know. It could be really anything, bedroom. So look at that. This is exactly what we want. So obviously we're not done yet because I need to deal with the area. Basically, it is length times width if you're not aware of what area is. But uh, it isn't translating. You can see I should have 50 square feet and I don't. Uh, but before I address that, I also want to address the fact that I don't like seeing the period, the, the decimal point, having two zeros after that. Like it's kind of silly and pointless. So this is what we would do. You would think we'd go to manage and then project units and then we could see area. Now, the thing here is I see zero decimal places and I, this, this is, this is what I want, but I don't see it in this area parameter. And that is because this these parameters are not a part of this project, whatever. So let's go to edit family, and we're going to address the area in both ways. So I'm going to come up here to my family types, and then I'm going to say area. And what it, what is area? Like we just said, we learned this in first grade. It is length, literally the parameter length. Spell this right. It's case sensitive times width. Look at that, and it even reports as 50. Okay, and we'll just see 50 here because it just happens to be 10 times 5 here. That's fine. Now, what, what I just said about seeing the decimal points, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the project as far as project units, but in the family because it is family units. It just so happens to be that it's pulling and transferring that information. So look, project units. If we go to area, would you look at that? Two decimal places. Hmm. You know, I could do anything I want, but in this, but in fact, I don't want any. This is a, you know, a concept stage, a planning stage. I, I don't want to be overly precise, nor do I ever really need to be that precise. And so I also want to see my square feet, or you could do feet squared, whatever. Square feet is great. So whenever I do this, I could see, oh, that is so satisfying. That really is. So this is the point where you'd start... Uh, changing the scale of the labels, which you'd have to go back into the label, load it back into this family, and then finally load it into your project. If you wanted to mess with that at all, 
And if you had any type parameters, which we don't, you would find them here for the label, transfer those into this particular family, and then again, load it into your project. And do I want to save these? Yeah, of course I want to save this. Override it and I'll be good to go. Great. So look at that. that. That's what I want right there. Look, bedroom is 50 square feet. Now that's a tiny bedroom, but regardless. So let's see. Let's, here's a real test. Whenever I push and pull this, not only should these length or width dimensions update, but also my area should here and the display here. So let's move this. Oh, now, is that not just the best thing ever? You know, it's very precise over here. It's actually perfectly precise to the 256th inch. And then I have 90 point. 10 square feet, but also look at this. I'm getting the rounding exactly like I want, you know, and I, I can take this really as far as I want. You, you get the idea. And so with that, let's make another one. I can just can hold control, drag this over here. And maybe we're, this is going to be the living room. So living, call it living. And so all of a sudden now I have both of these areas working together. And not only that, but I can easily push and pull these, move them around. I can see the areas update in real time. And I don't have to worry about drawing walls. I don't have to worry about any of that. Now, we could do basically the same thing with a generic model where it's 3D. And you could get the same effect and you could do it that way. And that works. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this is because, you know, yeah, we can always come back in here and draw walls over this, around this, whenever we're done planning. But... You know, if you wanted to start with 3D objects, you could. I just didn't because it's a lot easier to use. And chances are you're going to get a lot more use out of this in 2D than you would in 3D because it's just more to mess with. You know, you don't need to mess with that at all. And now what we could also do is, you know, we could duplicate this if we wanted to. There, there's so many more things that you can do. But to the point that where you are now with this is great. You know, maybe you'd have another one that's a different color, whatever, things like that. So that will do for this video. We looked at all of the label creation as well as the creation of the square, how we had to deal with parameters to track those down, the area, changing the units, all of that. And in the next video, we're going to start scheduling this data and you'll start to see why we use shared parameters and why that's really important when it comes to wanting to schedule this type of data. So again, that will do it for this video. If you happen to learn something or just ended up liking the video, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot and tells me that you might've learned something too. So I will see you in the next video, especially part two for this one, looking at the schedules. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.